Because in our way, in these peyote ways, we don't, Native American church, we don't use psychedelics. We don't even really use alcohol. We really curb our ways. We try to be a really clean life, you know? Um, a lot of our concerns are, is about the way that these psychedelics are being brought into, especially for our youth. A lot of our youth have never been around this stuff. You know, they go off the reservation, they're like a little country mouse going into a city. All these new tastes going around. Some guys like to go out, they come out, spend three or four months out there, can't make it in the real city of life, so they come back home. When they come back home, they're usually pockets are filled with stuff that we've never had before. Weed, LSD, mushrooms. And then they bring it into these ceremonies. You know, and then the people that do the security in the ceremonies, you have to go out and they have to take that stuff away from them or see someone who's on that stuff. And if they're on that stuff and they're in the meeting, you know what we do? We'll bring them in, but we're not to sit with us. We'll bring them in, we'll bless them, and then send them out on their way. But we're also going to remind them that what you're doing is that you're disrespecting your grandfathers. You're disrespecting your family name. You're disrespecting everything that you do for your life. And that's all I understand. You know, these people want to be able to get in touch about with psychedelics to be able to try to have an experiential experience. But you guys aren't even experiencing who you are inside first. You guys are playing with stuff at such an early age and you don't even understand about who you are first. That's important. That's why we're really focused on our ways. You know, I'm, I'm a voiceless person. I'm nobody out there. But I've witnessed a lot of things out there. I've witnessed a lot of roadmen get their positions. I've witnessed a lot of drummers get their positions and cedar men, all those people that have crossed over that moon properly. But we don't bring those other things in. And you know, if you guys want to play with that stuff, play with it away from us. Play with it away from that old man in there. You know, that chief, that peyote that sits in there. People don't understand what it is to be inside there. It's a deity to us. It's like creator. You know, we respect it. So many times when we have a problem, we go and we tell it. We express it to the point where it hurts. You know, people always say, you want to, you want to see something, you want to see Indians pray, go to a meeting. We're praying for everything that happens, all the people that have hurt, all those young ones that are coming up. Those young ones that don't know anything, you know, so that's why we're talking about this psychedelics, why we don't want this stuff in here. You know, we respect all these ways, we respect all these, all these new tribes, all these new people that are coming across from south, north, the stuff that you guys have, we want you guys to have that. But don't bring it, don't bring it around this stuff. We want you guys to be able to have that protection that we have. But remember that protection was given to the North American Indian, the American Indian. It was given to them for that because we have a relationship with the government. We would love to be able to help you get that same type of protection. But you guys have to do it on your own. There was a document that was brought up not too long ago. Beautiful the way you guys wrote it up. Talked about how they wanted to protect their medicines from the people that are coming up here like this Eagle Condor Church. You know, and a lot of these lawyers and judges up here. But we got a message for those lawyers and judges too. It's called bar grievances and judicial discipline complaints. And believe me, we're going to come after them as their own individual person. Coming after their license, coming after their way, just like the government after our way of life. We're going to come after you. Not in class acting shoots, but one at a time. Little cuts. That's how we're going to do things the right way. But once again, these peyote ways, very special to us. We don't want these musc musculine things. We don't want these Schedule One drugs all to be taken out. We don't want these peyote ways to be given up. We respect what you guys have. You know, you see these TikTok videos about this one, I think it's an attorney, speaking in broken English, talking about, oh, you just need to tell people that it's a religious right. Bull crap. Before this, what were you? Nice little Catholic boy, nice little Catholic girl, Baptist, Protestant, Presbyterian, maybe Jewish. And then all of a sudden you guys come and meet someone or meet some native boy and you want to be like them. Or you hear that, oh, I want to trip in peyote. It's not that. My God. You know, there's many years, that, many, many years, like early 2000s, 
mid 2000s, a lot of people used to go to those peyote gardens. And they had that protection. But they also used to bring other things back weed, meth, cocaine, because they had that protection to come through. That's another thing we don't want. We don't want all these people to have this protection to come through and carry these Schedule 1 things over because you guys aren't taking care of it properly. You guys have to sign out everything. You guys have to make sure you go from point A to point B and get there. But you don't understand that there's no control about who's going to take out, give some here, give some there. You know, this whole thing with Dora, this licensing thing. Oh, you need 40 hours. 40 hours, my ass. Excuse my language, but to be able to have a position takes a long time. You got to witness it. When that position is given to someone, it's witnessed. People are out there and they're seeing things out there. You know, when you hear of a roadman out there, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. We witnessed you. Oh, my uncle witnessed you getting that. My grandma witnessed you getting that position. But now we always see these young bucks that have jumped that moon going over to Santa Fe, Phoenix, Scottsdale, wherever. They're singing these YouTube songs, you know, these fast, fast songs, blah, blah, blah. but they don't understand what these songs are. They don't understand the meaning behind them. They don't understand these old songs, what they were. You don't understand the meaning behind those songs, the passion behind it, what it really means of what these people are talking about, the tears that come out when they're, when they're talking. These songs bring tears to your eyes because of what happens. Another thing is, tired of hearing these people come in, these newcomers that come in, or you guys never been taught the right way to conduct yourself around this medicine or these ways, these men, these women, these old people that are there, that have been there the whole life, and they're witnessing all these people coming in and messing things up. You know, you, get, you got these young guys going in there and playing around, playing around with these things that you guys don't know about. You know, the way that we, our movements, our articles, those fans, feathers, everything that we have, everything has a meaning, every little bit of it. But a lot of these guys, they don't understand. They're going and touching, touching, you know? Stop that. What the hell's wrong with you? You know, have a little respect. You guys want to come in this way? Have a little respect, because we respect you, you know? I want to ask someone, how, how many people have been to a meeting? Here we got a few in here. Now if you guys have been there, do you guys just show up on that day or do you go a week ahead? Yeah, so the ones that go ahead of time, they've been there and they've understand what it means. You go there ahead of time, you help out. All those grounds that are there that you're on, they're sacred grounds. You should be out there getting up early in the morning when the, before that sun is rising. Blessing yourself with that sun. Being thankful that you're there. Going out, cleaning everything up, making sure everything's perfect. If there's any holes in the ground, you fill them up because you don't want any of these old people tripping. See rocks? Pick them up. Be proud of where you're at. Not directing all my stuff to you, but, rather, but I think you understand where I'm coming from. So, you know, people don't understand like when you see cigarette butts, you gotta pick them all up. You might be pissed off, you gotta pick them up. See a piece of glass, pick it up. You know? If you don't do that, I'll be with you in one minute. But if you don't do that, what's gonna happen? Someone could step on that and hurt themselves. This old person sees that, it's been around, they see all that stuff laying around, they'd be like, these people don't care. They have no respect for that land. It's sacred land. That's that peyote's land, that chief. That's his house. When you put up that teepee, Everything is done perfectly. In the morning, what we do, if you guys have been there, you guys understand. I'm not going to tell you what we do in the morning. If you guys have been there, you understand it. When you put in that teepee, it's all done. It's all done right. When you put up that skin, tight as a drum. When you clean up in there, it's perfect. When you set up that moon, it's perfect. Everything is perfect in there. Throughout the night, you go in there, you're cleaning up. But now what we're seeing is we're seeing people drinking their water. We never had that before. You guys are drinking their water, squishing the plastic, making noise, putting it in there, tucking it under, cleaning it up. And then at the end of the meeting, what's going on? Got to go pick it all up. While you guys are out there eating and enjoying themselves, sitting in the sunshine, there's us cleaning up.
picking up, picking up all the garbage and all the cigarette butts that you guys throw in there, all the candy wrappers. And then we see your, you know, your booger rags in there and your vomit that didn't get cleaned up right because you guys, you know, there's ways that we clean this stuff up. There's ways that we do all this stuff. It just gets really irritating the people that sit behind here and don't say anything. That's why I never wanted positions. That's why a lot of people, they, we don't say anything because we don't want that position. We don't want to be able to be stuck where we can't say something, you know? I miss those old men and those old women who stood up all night long, all night, praying, kept their mouths shut, just came, came down, sing, sing those old songs. See people crying. I miss seeing those old people in there. And these new ones. I remember a lot of. I was in there when a lot of these people were still pooping yellow. These young ones in there. Now they're out there just throwing around, acting like big shots. You know, you see all these big shots out there. She should be humble. You know, when you see them out there. I've been to a couple of meetings where we've walked in. It's like look around. It's like who's in there? Who's sitting up there? Oh, it's you. You married? No. All right. Let's go over there. Pay my respects. Grab that chief. No one's going to say anything. You guys are conducting yourself wrong. Some people might get mad. But you know what? We're just protecting that old man, protecting that chief, protecting that medicine because it does have no one to speak for. No one speaks up for it. No one says anything. All they want to do is they want to be, look at me, look at me. They like that medicine. That medicine, when it talks to you, it's like, oh, look at him. He wants to be like me. Oh, look at her. She wants to be like, oh, look at that one. Always spewing out stuff. Always being like a magpie. Always being like a badger. Biting at everything. You know? They always tell you, when you walk in that door, leave your luggage there. End of the night when you're done, leave it there. Don't walk out with it. Most people, they pick it right back up. As soon as they walk out that door, they're picking it up with them. All their problems, everything that they prayed for, they just took it back with them. You know, these Indian doctors, one, that's another thing we talk about. These guys say they're Indian doctors. Who witnessed that? Where are you guys getting these bundles? Where are you guys getting all this stuff? You guys just making it up? You guys see something, you're making it yourself? Saying, oh, this old man gave it to me. Oh, this... No, they didn't. We, no one witnessed it. But we hear about it. How can you not come back over there running your meetings? How can you not going over there running your sweats? But you're always going around everywhere else, running them, putting that money in your pocket. You know? We're tired of that. You want these ways back to where it was, these old ways. We used to be able to go out to those gardens and pick out stuff and know that it came back. You know, when you guys are cooking in there, that food should be going to those old people. People that used to, you know, there was a time when you used to be able to go to meetings and there were ceremonies and people would drive hours just to be around there, just to witness that teepee. No one really knew who was in there, but they wanted to hear those songs. Stop recording those goddamn songs on your phones. You know, you guys don't know what you're playing with. You guys don't know what these songs are. You guys don't know what our life is. Learn this way. Spend a little time up there. Come up there, learn this way, earn your respect, get yourself in there. Because once you understand that, you're not going to be asking. You're not going to be like a treasure hunter asking all the time, oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? Oh, what's this? Those are treasure hunters asking all the time, taking a little bit of knowledge and then going out and doing it on your own. But you guys don't understand what you're doing. You're messing with things you don't understand. You're messing with people's lives. People are putting their trust into you to come up and ask for help. But what are you guys are doing? Instead of that person asking for help, that person that brought you in these ways, they're asking help for you. That's not the way to do it. You're supposed to ask for it. Come in there humble. You don't need to come in there with giving money. Man, I hear all this stuff. Yeah, this guy made like five grand. What? Yeah, they gave him a couple hundred bucks. Why? He's supposed to be there. He's a humble man. 
You know, just like these white, I'm not even going to put it that way, just like these preachers out there, these fathers out there, the original way is supposed to be a humble life. You live amongst the people. Very humble life. It's a hard life. Ceremonial life is hard because you're taking everyone's problems to heart. You never bring those problems back out. You never hear those old men, those old women, those ceremonial people. You never hear them back talking like we do now. God damn, you can't, can't go anywhere without people bitching at each other. Especially Indian people. You know why, you know why the government loves to deal with Indian people? Because they know they can give you a little bit of money and you guys are going to bicker about it all the time and you're not going to get anything done. You know, you guys are telling me, you should respect all these old people. You respect the elders. You're just disrespectful. It's bull crap. Because you know what? Those elders, if they really cared, they would have done something decades ago when they were on the councils, when they were receiving all these government grants. You know what? You should have secured our lands. You should have secured our water rights. You should have helped those people that don't have electricity. You know that there's freaking companies in there that have given so much equipment cable equipment, all this stuff. Can't even freaking put a mile of freaking fiber optic out there because everyone's fighting or everyone wants to drive the tractor. Then you guys break it and then knowing nothing gets done. Takes years. Another thing is tribal council people, piss off because you know what? You guys aren't doing things that you're supposed to do. You guys get all this money and then what you're doing is you're paying people sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a job that should only be paid twenty or thirty the education of a 7th or 8th grader can't do anything, can't communicate, can't communicate with people, have no customer service. You know, you guys are spending money over at the casino, you should be spending that money at home, putting it aside for your kids. But it comes back down to these ceremonial ways because you guys have gotten all around it just because you guys want to get high. You guys don't even understand what this peyote is. There's so many decades I was telling you about, so many times we've gone without it's our faith that puts us through. We still go every week. It's that faith. There's times we didn't have anything. You know, touch an empty jar. Or you go and you touch by that old man just to get that blessing, that grace from him. Still go on throughout the night. Still sing your songs. Still be happy. Still eat in the morning. Still do everything. Still take everything down. Clean everything up. Have a good life after that. Get all those blessings. But now it's just like you guys come around, you guys want to do stuff. Hang out. Sit down with everybody, you know? You guys just want to sit down. Whatever happened to the help? No one helps out anymore. It's like, hey, go put the teepee up. Okay. One, two guys. Usually it's just me or someone else. Sometimes it's terrible. You put up. You know, at Sundance, sometimes we'll put up like four or five teepees throughout the day and still have to go do stuff. Because people need help. That's what we do. We help one another. We love one another. Another thing is, all these native people, stop touching people. Especially in these goddamn sweats. Stop touching people. Keep your hands to yourself. You guys are out in the street, stop touching people. We don't hit each other. What is it? You know, you want to say something with your words? Say it. Don't need to yell. You don't need to use your hands. You know, we're good people. We don't put our hands upon people. We always say, love one another. Help one another. Give when you can give it. You have a little extra? Help the ones that are pitiful. The ones that don't have anything. You know those old people that come around to ceremonies? The ones that are walking, they don't have much, or they catch rides, and they sit outside all day, you know, and you ask them, hey, come on, come on in. They don't want to because they know that they get the blessings in there. They want to be able to let someone else go sit in there, but they came just to witness, just to be able to get that blessing. But now we have all these people who want to go in there because they think they get a blessing. They walk around like these people who go around maps. Oh, God. These people are saying they're going to want to protect peyote walking around. Oh, walking in white. Oh, you know, what are you guys? You guys aren't like that. You guys are mean as fuck. Excuse my language. You guys are mean as hell when you guys go home. But you get around all these other people and you guys are acting like you're all spiritual. Oh, don't think you'd touch me. I'm a big shot. You know, no, you're not. 
You really want to, you really want to help out these people? Quit looking at yourself. Look around. Open your heart to the people, not to yourself. Quit being like what that old peyote tells you, that old man when he's sitting there talking to you. Everyone wants to be like me. Look at him. Look at him sitting back like this. Big tough guy. Singing those YouTube songs. Fast songs, fast songs, fast songs. Everyone forgot about those slow ones. What it really means. What it means to pray. What it means to actually sit there and cry when you're talking. When you're praying. Those tears are coming out because you've just lost somebody. You lost a grandfather or one of those old people. They're not sitting there anymore. But do you remember when they were sitting there? You know, so they put something there in its place. And if you've been there long enough, you know what we put there. Those are those things that we miss. Those things. It often hurts so much to see this happen to us. And it really hurts to see these young bucks destroying what we had. You know, you can see all these YouTube videos out there singing really good songs, but they're all the same songs. You guys are, you know, jazzing it up a little bit. Sitting there showing all your articles. Telling, oh, I'm a sun dancer. You know, people who live this life, they don't tell you what they do. They don't tell you who they are. They don't go show you their scars. They go and they help the people. You know, when you go to these ceremonies, you've got to be careful about what you do. You never cross these people. If you're inside that meeting, there's certain ways you need to conduct yourself if people are there. How you walk in. What side do you go in? Who do you pay attention to that's going to tell you where to come? If you've been there long enough, you should know that when you walk in that door, where you're going. How are you going to do it? You shouldn't be walking in that door going... Waiting for, you know, you're just sitting there, just walking around, just waiting for someone. And then hopefully someone is saying, or oh, wait right there, you know, they're singing. Oh, they're passing that medicine. But you just messed up because you don't pay attention. You know, that person that brought you there didn't teach you the right ways. So I didn't want this to be a monologue. and I didn't want this to be where I'm just, you know, just harping on everybody. But, you know, if you're going to be in there, have a little respect first. Come out here. Come out there. Help out. See what's going on. Talk to everybody. Show your face. Help out. Go get that wood. Go gather it. You know, people are going out to the mountains. Go get wood. Jump in that truck. If there's no room in the truck. Jump in the back. We ride in the back. You know, bouncing around in the trees. Sometimes you almost fall out. Sitting on top of the wood, <laughs> you know, hoping that you're not going to fall out. But it's fun. Got to split that wood. You got to clean it all up. Got to get those rocks ready. Got to get that sweat ready. You guys don't see that. You guys never experience that. But we're out there sweating, stinky. Oh, another thing. Okay, you Europeans that come around and you guys don't like to take showers, have a little respect when you go in that sweat or in that teepee. Take a shower. Use some deodorant. We don't want to smell you. It smells like freaking nasty onions. Your feet stink. Jesus Christ. You guys are making us nasty. You guys are making us want to just puke. And you were supposed to put up with that? Have a little respect. You know? These are these things that people don't want to talk about. But I'm going to tell you. Because I don't want to smell it. I don't want to puke. Eating that medicine, like, because some guy's lifting his hair and sitting there, it just smells like a nasty onion. No. You know, so these are these things. Clean up yourself. Have a little respect when you walk in those sweats. Have the right gear. If you don't have the right gear, stay out. If it's too hot in there, don't make a mockery of everything and don't bastardize the whole ceremony and say, <gasps> <laughs> it's too hot. It's too hot. You need to get out. Crawling out there, I'm freaking everybody out. Wait an extra 30 seconds. The door's going to open up. Now you're not going to die. Jesus Christ. Have a little. Grow a pair. Pull up your big girl panties. Come on. It's not that hard. I know. But. I'm going to take a couple of questions here so you guys kind of see where I'm going. The whole thing is, is just about respect. 
whole thing is, is that you know you guys want to know these things, but there's things that you don't know. These unspoken rules. You guys, know what those unspoken rules are? You know what they are? You spend enough time in there, you understand what they are. Protocols. You spend enough time around us, you understand what they are. Don't be a treasure hunter. Don't be asking for things. How do we do this? What do you do? How do you do it? Go out there, experience it. It takes years. It's a lot of time. Not just showing up to a meeting. And you know what? Spend some time out there because there's a lot of us, we give up our spot. Just say so you can get your butt in there and go sit down and not participate. Or that medicine comes around, you're like, no. I see the, I saw that last person get sick. I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> you know? We put our time in there. If you guys don't want to participate in the right way, let us go in there. Earn your spot to go in there. So I'm going to take your, your question, madam, and I apologize. I, I don't want this to be a monologue. I don't want you guys to feel like I'm just harping on people, but this is our way of life. Yeah. I saw your hand up. Yeah, I actually just wanted to say, um, could you let us know who you are, where you came from, and why you're here today? That's all I wanted to know. Okay. <laughs> so, my name is David. I am nobody. I grew up in these ways. So I'm part of a voiceless people. You know? People who spend time in these ways. That's who we are. We don't need to have a card. We don't need to have a tribe behind us. We need to have to say, well, my uncle is this. Well, my dad is a medicine man. Well, my grandma was this. Who gives a shit? Nobody cares. Because when you're in there, you're conducting yourself for that old man. You're paying attention. It's not, who are you? Who am I? It's like, what do you do? How do you do it? Everyone always wants to be, I'm a card-carrying member. I am a car, I am a dog, I am a horse. No, you're not. You're a human being. The government gave you a card to let you know that you are a human being. You already knew that. You already knew where you come from. You already know your family. You know where your lineage comes from. So why do you need this? Why do you need to tell everybody? Well, I'm Indian. Why do you need to tell everybody? Well, look at this. Look at, oh, check this out. I got this piercing here, I got this piercing here. It's like, no, you didn't. Someone kicked you in the butt. You know, you weren't dragging anything. You fell down drunk. We saw you. We saw you cutting yourself up, trying to tell yourself you're something you're not. Those are the things. So if you want to know who I am, nobody. I'm voiceless. I'm talking for people that have been in there. I'm talking for the ones Everything you heard from me tonight is everything that we've heard from all the people sitting around in different spots of that teepee in there, or outside, or the ones witnessing in their car. who don't want to go inside because they don't want to be around that clown show. Oh, there's a big shot, a big clown in there. You know? Doesn't even have a wife. Who's pouring that water? Oh, that sponsor gave them big bands. Now we're going to be able to... Oh, we're treating him so well. Yep. My buddy. My buddy. Hey, let's go to the store. Hey, you want to go to the casino? Hey, can you buy me this? Can you buy me that? That's the people that come around anymore. And what do you guys do? You guys honor them. You guys take them in. Okay, let's go to the restaurant. Hey, you've never been to that restaurant before, but you're ordering everything that you can get. They're treating you like a king. They don't care because they can afford it. But you can't. But you're going out there and doing it. What you should do is just like, hey, I want to go to the store. I want to buy all this stuff. Well, we're going to spend 300 bucks tonight. I'm going to go buy all this food. And we're going to go take it to the people. Take it to these old people that need it. You know, there's that old lady that lives in that trailer over there. Her windows are broken. She's need electricity. Let's go take her something. What about that old man that's raising his son's kids? His son's kids and his son's son's kids. What about them? No one pays attention to them. What about when they come into the tribal council? And they're like, oh, I need some, I need some food. And then there's someone in there that just doesn't care. Ah, you don't need anything. Or they just don't like you. Like, oh, people don't like me. Like now. 
You're like, who are you? But you don't understand what we're doing, what we're going through, what these people are going through, these old ladies raising these kids, trying to teach them these ceremonial ways, these traditional ways, keeping them like this. And then all of a sudden, these young guys come around, they go off the res, come back through, bring this crap in again. That's why we don't want the psychedelics to come back all the way around, come back to these psychedelics. We don't even want this weed around there. Because I tell you what, these guys are coming in, <laughs> putting all that cologne on there. It's like, God damn, you smell. Not only do you smell like cologne, but you smell like weed still. And you're coming in and you want to go and you want to pray. You want to come in and want to pray amongst all those old people. Disrespecting it. Everyone knows what you're doing, but you're thinking that you're cool because you just out, you live out in the city. You live out in Denver. You live out in Rapid City. You come around, maybe you bought a new car, something that no one else has, or maybe you got a truck that you can't afford, but you're still bringing it around. You know? Not going up, not doing anything in ceremony, just hanging out with the girls. Not going out helping out. Go out hunting. You guys aren't out there helping us. You guys aren't out there cleaning things up. You guys aren't out there cleaning that wood. You guys are just sitting around with the women. You know? Go put a dress on. Go on. Those those things. So I want to hear what you had to say really, because you had your hand up for a while. I think it was you. No, I just wanted to Oh. I just, I just wanna know who I was. Nobody. Yeah, like, oh, just nobody. Hi, my name is David. I am nobody. My lineage comes from no one. I am not a dog. I am not a horse. Okay. But I love these ways. I was brought up in these ways. I know these ways very well. I know these laws. I know the protocols. But until you get to know these ways, there's no reason to understand. And you know, you know, me telling you, what do you want me to say? My name is Running Bear. I come from a clan of wool shitters. Is that what you want to hear? Okay. What? You want to know that? Oh, do you think that? Do you, um, why? It, it doesn't make any sense. Did you going to put someone on a pedestal because there's someone? No. You know, you know that a ceremonial person is just a regular person. They're a tool. They'll tell you that. They don't want to be up here. They don't want to be sitting up here because you know why? You're sitting on a high horse and you're going to be kicking it. Me. I'm going to be kicking it like a donkey. <laughs> knock you right off because they can tell you. Well, no? I know. I come from my mom. Creator. These ways. Oh, what, what do you want to know? Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell me what, tell me what you want to hear. Who are, who are you and tell me what you would like to hear. I have been all night. I was a card, member, card, member, card carrying member. All right, the reason why we I'm spend a lot of time here. Everything that I've talked about is experience, madam. But okay. if you want, if you want, I'll write something down for you if it makes you no, feel no, better. No, no. But the reason why I, I was asking is because you're being recorded. I know. Hi. Okay. So that's once. Why, that's why I was just asking that. Okay. So once again, my name is David. I am nobody. I speak from the voiceless. There are a lot of people that live in these ways. Hundreds of thousands of people that live this way. Okay, so I'm trying to speak for those. I'm trying to speak for some of these old men that are gone. I'm trying to speak for some of these old women that are gone. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. Okay. David, maybe we can have a question. Yeah, I'd like to be able to hear. Say your name and then please repeat the question. Okay. Is there any other questions out there? Sure. My name is Liz, and I was just wondering how you do, what do you do before you go into the ceremony? How do you prepare yourself? And then also what you do after you're done with the ceremony? Okay, so if I got it right, it's like how do you prepare for the ceremony if you just got invited? And how do you conduct yourself? First of all, that person that invited you hopefully is going to be able to tell you how to conduct yourself or what to expect when you go there 
that person should bring you five, six days, maybe even seven days before that, because there's things you have to do. There's wood you have to gather. You need to go get those rocks. You need to clean up that sweat. You need to clean up the grounds. You need to get everything ready. You've got to make sure those teepee poles are all set and then are broken. There's lots of things you have to do to prepare. So you should be there. And if you're a woman, you should be there helping cooking. You should go there and you should prepare and bring a little bit of money, not to give, but to buy stuff, buy food. Not for the family that's doing it, buy food for the old people that need it, the ones that you see that come around, the ones I was telling you about earlier. You know, you always know the pitiful ones that are out there, the ones that are struggling. That's those are the ones that really want that food because it's been blessed. Plus, it's probably food that they haven't had in a long time because they want to feed those young ones in there. But the most important thing is getting out there and preparing that land, you know, that sacred land, and doing everything for that deity, that creator that we love so much. You know, you've got to go there, you've got to get all everything set up cleaned up. Throughout the night, you also got to make sure everything is clean. You know, I've been to some meetings where people don't even care. It's just like, you go in there, it's partially clean when you go there, and then you leave, it's just like it's a wreck. Man, throughout the night, we're always cleaning, making sure everything's all nice and cleaned up, picking up the garbage, you know, making sure there's nothing around, no, no wrappers, no cigarette butts. Those ashes come around, we make sure they're all clean in there. Everything is perfect for him, so we have that respect. I hope I got to answer some, you know, but it's all about respect. It has nothing else to do with anything else. It's about respect for that old man. You know, and if you really want these blessings in there, you should be helping out all the time. And don't be talking while you're in there, you know? Sometimes we'll giggle around, mess around, you know, but there's a time and place for it. If you have questions throughout the night, hold on to those questions. Ask them afterwards. So that person that brought you in or that old lady that's over there trying to make sure that you're conducting yourself right, she doesn't have to go and take her time off from what she's praying to go over and educate you so you can conduct yourself right in front of that old man because you're pissing off everyone else because you're making a mockery of everything in there because you don't understand what's going on and then people are looking at that person that brought you in and they're saying what is wrong with you you know and then you when you see this going on throughout the night they're pointing at you you can't say anything but you you know Quit messing around, quit fidgeting around, quit sticking your feet out. You know, someone's walking around, pull your feet in. You see that medicine come around? Learn how to conduct yourself right in front of it. Don't wait for someone to tell you. Those are those things. You know? But everyone just wants to be able to... This is me, this is who I am. I am Running Bear. I am dog kicking in the wind. I am pissing in the wind. You know? It's just like, who gives a crap? Yes? Huh? Oh, sure. Okay, so. Okay, bar grievances. Uh, the, how are we going to protect our ways, especially from a lot of these attorneys and judges? There's a thing called bar grievances. Beautiful thing, you know, they've always taught us if you're gonna fight someone, especially these white not especially these non natives, you gotta go after their ways. You gotta fight them with their own ways. So the bar grievance you go after, you know, the code of conduct. They're so as to be able to conduct themselves in a proper way. A lot of these attorneys lie through their freaking teeth because they have a card to lie. Judges, there's a thing called judicial discipline complaints. All you need to do is get their judicial canons. They have to comply with these things. Just because they're a judge doesn't mean that they have ruling of your life. It's a thing you need to understand. Jurisdiction. You know, there's a few things you should grab case law, go to the conclusions, 
read all that. If you want to understand about peyote, you want to understand about Indian religion there, you want to understand about the bar grievances, YouTube it. You can stop attorneys from doing this. We're going to stop a lot of these kids. We're going after these guys personally. Each attorney, each judge. We're going to go after them in their personal capacity, individually. We're going to go after their license. They're going to go after their insurance, especially. So little by little, we're going to do these things. So I was over at Dora today. Couldn't talk to the young lady that uh, is dealing with this thing with uh, the psychedelics. So I really wanted to talk to her about you know, what they're doing and how they're really screwing up our lives and how they're really trying to create loopholes within this, <laughs> this Freedom Act. But they don't understand that this was given to North American Indians. We have a special relationship with the government. It wasn't given to the Southerns. It wasn't given to the people up in Canada. It was given to us. It's not that we're trying to keep everything for ourselves. You know, we'd like to be able to help the ones that come across from the southern borders or the northern, or the northerns that use our ways. We never really knew people that do the mushrooms or marijuana or stuff like that. That's all new kind of stuff, but. I don't know, there's just so much to talk about. I just don't understand. What do you want to know? I mean, I really want to talk more about like, <laughs> like our ways, because people don't understand about what it's like to be inside there. You know, how do you conduct yourself? I know I went off a lot of ways, and I you know I probably ticked off a lot of people and didn't want it. you. I don't know if I answered you right, but I don't want to be able to just say, this is where I am, this is where I am, this is where I come from, this and that, this is where I taught, because, oh, and this is another thing. You guys are coming around saying, this spiritual leader or this ceremonial person took me under their wing. No, they didn't. They felt sorry for you. They felt sorry for that person that didn't teach you how to conduct yourself right. So they're coming around. And yeah, it's kind of cool when you get to hang out with the, the Cedar Man drummers or the road men in there, and they're bringing you around the family, and they're hanging around you, and they're telling you, or they're bringing their glasses down because they're trying to tell you something what you did wrong in there, but they're trying to do it in a very kind way. They can't express themselves that way because they have a position, so they wait for other people that aren't afraid to express themselves or tell you about these things. And there's a lot of people that are not there anymore that tell you these things on how to conduct yourself or, you know, get the elbow and say, hey, stop that. You know, why are you doing that? Why, why are you holding the medicine like that? Why, why are you doing that? So, do you have any questions? I just don't. Yeah, brother. I'm just curious if, with your tradition, are you familiar with the Weasel tradition? About what kind of traditions? The Weasel? The Weasel? The Weasel? I'm not pronouncing it wrong. No. The Weasel is the Weasel. Can you explain it? Because I don't know anything about it. Yeah, so you're talking about people from Mexico. So, you have to realize that. Very diverse, right? He's here to talk about peyote because the medicine for Native American people is peyote. The mushrooms are from people in the south. So it's like you're asking about yeah. biology to no, somebody who's peyote. Right, right. And, that, and that's, that's what I'm curious about is how, how are there similarities in our traditions or in our ceremonies? So, Bill, you're speaking from one perspective, right? Yeah. We always acknowledge them. We, you know, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. We love to hear some of the experiences you guys do. We're really not into uh, all those weird things you guys see and all those real psychedelic colors. You know, people say like, "Oh, peyote does that too." No, it doesn't. It's a really beautiful way to get to know who you are with Creator at once. Sometimes it teaches you a bad lesson too. My God, it'll make you puke. It'll make you hurt. It'll scare the living hell out of you where you never want to come back again. It'll make you think twice about even touching that peyote. Because there's something you did wrong in your life or maybe it's not for you. You know, and you guys, yeah. another thing is, like, what are your intentions 
when you guys want to learn these ways, what's your intention about it? What are you there just to try to experience that a high or a spiritual deity that you know that some YouTuber said that they experienced or because goddamn I'd like to go experience that myself but uh, what we experience in there is pure love it's, you know you, you, you feel you feel that love that Creator gives you that grace you hear those old ladies that are they're crying because they lost something or they just lost their husband or you know they're having a real tough time and then you listen over here and you hear that old man you know who's really trying to help his family he's having a hard time doesn't have a job and then you hear over here and you hear that young boy he says you know he wants his mom he wants his daddy but they're all drunk and they just want to do all this stuff you know you hear all this stuff but you're also praying for each one of them because they're praying for you as well. They're voicing out their opinion, but they're not asking for revenge. And that's another thing we talk about. Why are you in there asking for revenge? That man doesn't know that. That peyote doesn't know that. All he knows is love. It's pure love. That's what he wants to give you, that grace. But we know nothing else. We don't know nothing about, you know, your psychedelics. We don't condone you guys coming in high, we do not like alcohol. You know, sometimes when you go to these conferences, these NEC conferences, and tons of teepees out, 12, 13, 14, more, and sometimes you'll hear, you know, a drunk guy or a drunk girl come through screaming. Sometimes they'll ask us, go grab that one, bring him in. We'll bring him in, we'll see to them off. Take them back out. Pray for them. Tell them to come back around when you're a little more sober. Go apologize to your grandfather. Go apologize to all those people that you made. You know? We always show you love in there. But now there's a lot of these guys, they'll go and they'll push them around, beat them up, tell them they're disrespectful. We don't do that. You know? A lot of these ways have changed so much. It just it hurts anymore. I don't know what you guys really wanted to hear, but you know, when we're talking, what we're talking about is well, everything that we're losing, all of those experiences that we've lost, those old men that used to sit up there, those old women that stand there all night long, no, they don't have bathroom breaks. Now we have bathroom breaks, but we never had them before because you prepared. When you walk out of that teepee, you're breaking you're breaking that prayer. It's just like when people go in there and fast, you know, the fasters. Whether you're doing some dance, whether you're doing all these other things, you don't touch them, you don't interrupt them, you don't cross in front of them. There's all these things that you guys don't know. There's things I shouldn't be telling you as well, but some things you have to know that, you know. And you see these guys, don't cross in front of them. You see that medicine, don't cross in front of that. Be respectful, pay attention, but don't grab these ways by paying attention and go and try to recreate them somewhere else. That's what we we're trying to talk about, you know, these young guys that are going out and disrespecting these ways. Man, it's just pitiful what they do. And once again, I, you know, I just feel like I'm just going to here just talking, bashing things that people do, but once again, you guys don't understand what we're losing. We're losing our life. We're losing something that we had, that we cherish, that we love so much, and it's going away, little by little. So, you know, when you hear us, we're just trying to save something. In 10 years, who knows if it's gonna be here? We always tell each other, learn the language. You know why I want you to learn that language? Because you want you to understand what the songs have meanings. Each word has a meaning. Each song has a meaning when you talk about it. When you say it, you know, that word comes out. It's beautiful inside. You're talking to that old man there. You're talking to the creator. And 
throughout the night, you're going to get those blessings. Those questions that you have, you'll hear them inside. You'll hear those answers. And when it's over, leave what you left at that door. All those problems that you had when you walked in there, they're gone. You prayed them. People prayed for you. Now you need to have enough faith within yourself when you walk out that door to leave that stuff there and go on with your life so you can go and take care of your life because you have children. You have a husband. You have your job. You have to conduct yourself right every day in your life just like we have to in our life. So those are those things that we talk about all the time. It's not just about ceremony. It's about teaching those very valuable lessons, morals, value of a person, human beings especially. Don't touch another human being, even if you're upset. Don't do that. Why do you do that? You talk about it. You show the love about it. You're angry? Voice your opinion and then get over it. But get over it. Don't keep bringing it up over and over and over. Don't be a magpie, a nagging wife, a nagging husband. You know? Don't be that person because there's no place for it in life. What if you do? What if you show up masked and you're ready to fight? What if you show up where? Masked and you're ready to fight. Maps? Yeah. Where? Oh, like could last last year? People got upset with me last year. I lost my credentials. They kicked me out of maps. I got this email telling me that they're going to have security waiting for me. And you know what it was all about? Because of what I'm talking about tonight. All those people were up there and I'd be like, hey, do you guys know about this? What about our ways? How can we not talking about our ways? How can we want to go and do all these things? How can we be talking about this Freedom Act? How can we be talking about trying to create a loophole? Why are you trying to get that same protection that we have? Because you guys want to be able to see something. And you guys are tearing apart our deity just to try to go grab that mescaline. It's all about money. It's all about pharmaceuticals. It's all about this big money. You guys let that talk for you. We're talking for the medicine to protect it. Other people are trying to figure out how to take it. Because it's a billion dollar industry. You guys are saying that our ways cure alcoholism, cure drugs, Pure depression, bullshit. It's you. You got to do it yourself. You got to find it within yourself. You got to pull. You'll be big girl panties. You got to grow a pair. And you got to figure out who you are. Because you can't do it through drugs. You got to have a nice clean life. How in the hell are you going to go through life if you're all screwed up all day long? Smoking pot all day long, not knowing what the hell you're doing. Taking drugs or microdosing. You know? You guys are saying, oh, you guys take peyote? One time a week. Sometimes we don't even have it. But we still have that faith. We don't need to go and get screwed up. We don't need to have the alcohol every day. Don't need to have a drink. Don't need to have weed. Don't need to have all this. We like to try to live a clean life. So why do you guys want to bring all this stuff in? And that's another thing. These native people, we very few of us left. Why do you guys want to infect us with all this stuff that we don't know anything about? Why do you want to bring stuff that we know nothing about? Why would you want to bring drugs onto your reservation when you don't, we don't allow it? Why do you guys sneak pot in there? Why do you guys sneak your vapes in there? It makes you feel better. I go in there and I feel better. I feel a little more spiritual. I'd like to take that and shove it down your throat is what I'd like to do. <laughs> huh? Very once in a while, but I like that CBD stuff. I really like the CBD creams. I'm not being... No. Because you know what? Yes, I have smoked weed. And yes, I have... I don't drink, but I have smoked, but I like that CBD stuff because it doesn't have that stuff that makes you a little crazy, but it makes your body feel good, especially when you get older like me, you know? I'm in my upper 50s. I fucking hurt every day, but I like those creams. They make my, they make my body feel good. They make my back feel good, you know? They make my knees feel good. I can walk around. 
But if you think I'm a hypocrite by saying that stuff, no. Because I tell you what, people that have done that stuff, they prepare a while, two weeks, they go without, so they don't have any of that stuff lingering in them. A lot of these old guys, when they're drinking, all these guys, ceremonial guys, they like to throw a little bit down once in a while too. But they know a meeting's coming up, they won't drink for a long time. because They want to be straight in there. They have that respect. When I used to do that stuff, I used to do that too. Wouldn't go, wouldn't smoke. Go, conduct myself properly. Didn't have that stuff in there. Yes, sir. I think our caller here, uh, Evan. Hi. Okay, um, I'm, not going, I'm not going to bash on anybody. I'm not going to say anything wrong. I think that what people do in their life... Okay, so non-binary people or... I don't know what you guys mean by two-spirit. You know, that's just kind of like a freaking Hollywood thing. Okay, I'm going to be real honest with the way that we were taught. A long time ago, when something like that was done, there'd be those old men or those old women would be like, come over to the family and be like, hey, what's going on here? What is going on? We want to know why is your son acting like this way? Why is your daughter acting this way? You know, we respect it. Just don't bring it around in those ceremony ways. Don't want it. And what I mean by that is like, you know, be yourself in there, but you don't need to go and wear a dress. You don't need to go and wear the women stuff. You know, do you want to play that role? We'll put you over by the women and you can serve food and stuff. You know, we'll respect that. But if you come into, okay, just like say one of our ceremonies, you know, we wear different colors out there. Colors represent things. Family, the tribe. But we don't do political stuff. And we don't do gender stuff. But now you're starting to see it in there. And that's what we're talking about, you know. If you're going to res be around these ways, have some respect for it. But don't try to push all this stuff into it that's never been around. You're always talking about this two-spirit stuff? Yeah. But... There was a time and place for that. Saying that they held special positions, I, we never heard of that. We treated them a little bit special because they were a little special. We'd let them do things that the women did, you know, or... But those women that acted like men, they never went with us up in the mountains. You know, a lot of these things are men's rights. You guys don't understand that, and you guys get upset when we say that. It's a men's rights. Some of these ceremonies are men's rights. Who in the hell are you to be able to try to do these things? We never had a woman's sun dance before. Now you're starting to see them. Never had, you know, a woman road person before. Now you're starting to hear about them. You're starting to hear about all this stuff that never used to happen. So I'm not trying to bash anyone. I, you know, we have gay people in our family. I have a brother that's gay gayer than any person I've ever met in my life. God damn, you, you know, you should be a woman. But um, people got upset with me one time when he came into a meeting and he was wearing that woman stuff in there and, you know, and I was like, hey, stop that. We don't bring that stuff in here. Don't try to change it, you know. We have respect for you, just like we have respect for your psychedelics and stuff. But don't bring it in there. Have a little respect. If you're gonna, don't, don't push your stuff on us so fast. Is what I'm trying to get to. We'll respect you. Come in there. We'll even hug you like your own brother. We'll hang out with you. Do everything with you. Almost everything with you. But we're gonna 
just don't want those things in the ceremony where they don't belong. Yes, sir. Uh, just quite another time. Yeah. One more yes, sir. Yeah. I hope that I'm not irritating people. And I hope that maybe you guys got something from this. I don't know. Did you learn anything? I have a different question. Sure, brother. Um, as somebody who was brought up in these ways, um, I'm sure, like other tribes around uh, Turtle Island that use peyote, you've seen the buttons shrink over the decades. Would you say that that's true? Yeah. Okay, first of all, about climate change, look outside. We're in mid-May. We've got more freaking snow in the mountains. I just sent a picture out earlier. We've got 10 feet of snow up there. Okay? It just snowed last night up there. Don't tell me about climate change. We, we haven't had anything. A lot of our peyote gardens, you know what it is? It's a lot of poaching. A lot of us, a lot of times, there used to be these actors and actresses that used to come up to the res paid attention. Some even got to a point where they could almost have a position. But what did they do? They went off the res, went to Hollywood, started teaching these ways. And then you started seeing Oprah talk about it. Then all of a sudden you got this influx of all this medicine going from Texas over to California, up into Canada. And then we had this other brother talking about, oh, you just need this card. I was up in Canada. I saw the peyote over in, you know, inside the dispensaries. It's just like, that old man doesn't know anything about that. He doesn't know anything there and about cultivation. No, we don't want that cultivation because it's a deity. It grows out of the earth. Why do we need to have it inside of a, of a hothouse? Another thing, when you have it in a hothouse, you have control over it. So you don't know who is touching those things. You don't know who is dissecting them. You don't know who is using it for research. You don't know who's cutting it up for medicine. You don't know who is doing what to it. That is our life. That is a deity to us. You know, I it, it think it's great that you guys want to say that it's for climate change. You guys, you know, we want to be able to grow some buttons to be able to help some people. We've got millions out there. There's enough for us. We just need to go there and get our lands back. We need to stop these doctors like Dr. Bronner and all those other guys that took this land and stop them where they're at. We don't want in our Schedule 1 drugs, we don't want that to be that way. We don't want them to just keep throwing all this stuff. We don't want you guys to be playing with stuff you guys don't even know. Why can't you go pick out something else? Why can't you go play with another cactus? There's another cactus that produces mescaline. It's more abundant. Just doesn't have as much. But why do you guys need to go out there? You guys have so many freaking drugs out there that are scheduled one, but you guys want to focus on something that only natives have. Why? Why do you want it? Yes, sister. We don't have to name names or name drops or anything like that, but can you give us an idea of the community that you sit with? What do you see coming in there? Can you explain a little bit of what you feel with when you're in these communities? Because a lot of people don't really sit with those communities. Okay, so, um, okay, I was just like going off the res, going on to another one. And what she was talking about is, you know, the communities and how we see things, what we're seeing, and how we're seeing things change. When you go to another place and we see these things, we go in, just like I was telling you before, and I walked into Santa Fe, and I was like, like, hey, we walked in here. It's like, ah, oh, it's not even a roadman out there. It's just some non-native guy. It's like, where's your wife? Who's sponsor? It's like, I'm the only brown one in here. Go around, go over and grab that old man, out of respect. Take him back. No one says anything. Tell him that old guy right there, that person there, you're not doing this thing right. You know? People are like, hey, you can't be doing that. It's like, hey, watch what you're talking about. Look what we have. We're taking it out of here. Is it 
Oh, okay. Okay, so it's just really weird what she was talking about because you can take it in so many different ways. Um, we have a lot of people that are coming in, like I was talking about earlier, about you know, hide behind the bands, hide behind five bands. It's like when they're selling out that eagle, selling out that band. The band is a thousand dollars, so you hear someone say, "Oh, they're hiding behind five bands." You know, just talking about stuff like that. You know, we've never seen people do that before, where you buy your articles. Some people have been in there forever and never even earned a feather. They touched one from someone else or, you know, you go along and you start to see these non-native ways inside of a ceremony. And you're like, what the heck are we doing in here? Why are we praying with these people? Now, why, why can't we take that old man out of here? You know, look at this teepee, it's pitiful. It's not even tight. It rains, it comes inside, and look at it, it's all running around all over, it's taking part of that moon away. What's wrong? You know, people don't have respect anymore. Some of those things. You know, um, just as the two spirits, the changing of the stuff, I'm not picking on anybody, I'm just trying to tell you, we've never really experienced a lot of this stuff before. And it's just coming into their ceremonies so fast, and a lot of people don't know how to how to take it, especially these old people who don't know what it is. Even like me, I don't know what a lot of this stuff is, nor do I want to know. But I have to know because I have a brother that's gayer than gay. I have a sister, a part sister that's the other way too. You know, she acts more macho than some of the guys I know. But um, at least she understands when she walks in there, she'll still put her hair up. She'll still walk in there like a lady and not push these ways. My brother, he's a little bit different. I don't like that, what he does, but I just wish he'd have a little more respect, but you gotta look at his life. His life is awful. And that's another thing, you know, people who go around playing with these ways, look at their lives. Their life is crap. They're living a crap life. They're living crap life in their ceremony ways and it reflects upon their real life and how they're doing. Are they happy with the wife? Do their children have like them? Do they have a good life? Do they have a good job? If not, they're doing something wrong in their life. And that usually starts right in that ceremony. You're conducting yourself right. When you have a good life in there, that good life reflects on your life out here. I don't know if I understood what you were talking about, sister, but you know, I was trying to figure out what this brother was saying and this brother over here. I really respect you, bro. I don't, you know, and, um, I have no disrespect to you, you know. I love for who you are, I love for what you're doing, and whatever you do in your life, bro, you know, all I can tell you is just be careful, okay? Just be careful with what you do. You only have one life. So just live it in a beautiful way. But we'll always be praying for you. I'll remember you now. And there I'll be praying. Say, yeah, I remember that brother over there. I'm pray for him. Um, does anyone really have anything to say? I know, that I, t I know that I ticked off one or two people in here, and if I did, or if you thought that you didn't learn anything, or if you wanted to try to figure out what I was trying to talk about, or maybe I'm just fully retarded up here, I don't know. All I know is I've just been trying to tell you about what we know, and what we feel, and what we see, and how we experience it, and what we know that we're losing. We're losing this way faster than anything, especially because our young ones aren't learning the language, they're not learning what these songs are. Everyone wants to be a YouTuber, you know? They forgot what these old songs are, they forgot what these old, old songs are, the meanings behind them. They forgot what it's like to be able to spend time out there and clean, you know? You know how much it sucks to do this all day long? <laughs> Hours, putting it there and you Pockets smell like smoke and dirty and you know, all dirty faced and everyone's inside the house and just having a good old time, but you're out there doing what you have to do. Hey, Is, David, yeah. One more about the Hi. How can you help me? How can you help me what? 
I'm not grieving at all. I don't, I love life. Life is so freaking awesome. Oh, the loss? The loss, the loss is going to come from the people who, like you, you're going to be, you're, you really want to help out? Read these ways. Read that Indian Freedom Act. Read it. Understand it. And know that what we're fighting for is just to protect something that we have. Something that is so beautiful to us. And beautiful for you too. We'd love for you guys to experience this love. But you need to earn it first. You need to come around. You need to spend some time there. You know, just don't expect that you're going to go in that TV. Jesus Christ, you know how many times we've just given up our spots just for people to go in there? To experience it and we're sitting out having to hear everything you know we're sitting out maybe when it's raining or it's a little bit cold we're just letting you guys experience all that but we know we're going to get those blessings and that grace but if you really want to help out you know have a little sincerity understand what we're trying to tell you we don't say we want that we want to experience it we want all this you know i hear about this all the time that's ours. That's part of Mescaline. I want to try this. I want to do that. It's like, well, hold on a second, man. Calm down. Come around first. Experience this. Live our life first. You know, just don't read about it in the book. It's not Hollywood. Everyone, everyone wants something. Everyone wants something. But what do you really want? You know, stop being a treasure hunter. I don't know if you guys heard me talk about that before, but a treasure hunter is someone who comes in and they're seeing something. They want something. What are you doing here? Why are they doing that? What does it mean when they do this? Why, why are they, you know, why are they moving their fingers like that? Why? Yes, madam. How do we know that someone's treasure hunting or if they're just mm -hmm. trying to learn? Yeah. You see that the way they conduct themselves. The ones that come across and they're there early, they come across, they don't ask a lot of questions, they're just paying attention. The ones that ask a lot of questions, they're looking for something. Asking a lot of questions. Usually they have their phone nearby, talking. Taking quick little snapshots. Sometimes you see them with the cute little glasses or the pens that record stuff. You know? So that's a sincerity that those people need to find within themselves of what they want and who they are. Because they know who they are. They know they're treasure hunters. That's why we don't say a lot of things. You know, people are always asking me, it's like, what are those unspoken rules that you guys are talking about? How do I need to conduct myself? That person that brought you in should be telling you those things. But not to be able to tell you with those little tiny secrets that we have. Those secrets are when you spend enough time inside that meeting. You know what's going on in there. You know how to set things up. You know how to... What each one of those things up there for. Each one of our medicines. What those articles are. You know, so... You see that when people, when they bring in their, in their boxes, you see what type of things they have. It's like, how did you get all that? Jesus Christ, we've been here for 20 years. I've never seen one of those. And you just get that, oh, because you were in Oklahoma. Uh, what would you pay for that? You know, the selling of that eagle, that's another thing that we really are really upset about. I don't know how all you guys get these feathers. How in the hell are you guys doing that? You guys coming around, showing all this stuff. You guys come in, it's like, you're not even authorized to have this. That's another thing, authorization. Who authorized you to go run these meetings? Who authorized you to go run that sweat? Who's authorizing you to hold on to those articles like that? Who witnessed it? Remember I told you earlier, we witnessed everything. When someone gets a position, we witnessed it. Someone witnessed it. Someone knows what you're doing. It's not some young buck that comes across over that you just met in Santa Fe going, oh, this is what I'm doing. Or we hear about it, or you hear about it when they, but they never come home. They never run meeting, never run sweat, but they're running them out there. 
playing with paint they're not supposed to be playing with, playing with stuff they don't want to be playing with. But you guys idolize them. You guys take them into your home. You guys give them money. You guys let them drive your truck. You guys let you get. You guys even give your bodies to them. What the hell are you guys wrong with you? You know, you guys are giving yourselves up to these people that have nothing to give. All they're doing is taking from us. Well, in a minute, we'll just wrap up. But, you know, that's another thing I really want to talk about. Taking these things from us, taking from other people especially. These guys running these meetings, you do not know who you're hurting. You do not know that person that's asking for help. And all you're doing is looking for something in return. Maybe a little bit of money. Maybe you're going to get something from the woman. You know, that poor woman, giving herself away, thinking that she's going to get something. These guys are pigs. Absolute freaking pigs. You guys need to start calling them on that. Be respectful about it too. And be respectful when you come to our lands. You guys come out there, dress properly. Okay? None of these halter tops, none of these super short shorts. When we're inside there, we want to be able to have... We want to be straight. We don't want to have temptations.